Uh, hi viewers, this is Elisha and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to answer a couple of questions from the past paper, which is Science Paper 1, which was written by the GC candidates in 2023. Without any further ado, let's take a ride. So let's start with this question. So this question has to do with a generator. What we have here is the magnet. We also have a magnet there. That's a permanent magnet. Then amid of the magnet, we have the coil. And then at the far end, we have these, these rings. Then on the rings, there are those that are attached to them. So now let's answer the questions that follow. They're saying write down the names of the components A and B. So the components they're talking of are these rings. What are they? So depending on the kind of a generator you're looking at, you will either have split rings or slip rings. So these are slip rings because they have no splits. So A these are slip rings, slip rings. Then these named as B are carbon, carbon brushes. State three factors that increase magnitude of the electromotive force produced by the generator. So the factors that are expected of you those that are the ones you to actually list include the following the rate of rotation of the the coil this one here the rate at which it's spinning or it's rotating determines the magnitude of the electromotive force which is induced so if it's spinning at a, a pretty fast rate then there's more electromotive force that is actually generated. If it's spinning at a slow pace, then the magnitude of the electromotive force also lessens, or it happens to be low. Then the other factor is actually the size of the permanent magnet that is being used. If you, if you use a much larger magnet then the electromotive force that happens to be induced happens to be of great magnitude you use a smaller mag a smaller magnet the magnitude of the electromotive force induced also happens to to reduce then what else the number of tens on the coil so a coil normally happens to have some tens on it it's like a wire happens to be wound on it. So the number of those windings determines the, the magnitude of the electromotive force that will be induced. If it has more tens, there will be a higher magnitude, a large magnitude of electromotive force. If there are fewer windings, then the electromotive force that will be induced will not be as great as when it has more windings. So we're done with this question. Let's move on to the other question. I'm saying the figure B91 shows radiations, PQ and R passing through an electric field. So this question was actually derived from the topic atomic physics. So when there's nuclear degradation, of nuclear disintegration normally there are some particles that are actually released from the nucleus we have alpha particles and then there are beta particles then there are some radiations which are released so now this radiation which comes in form of energy is actually gamma radiation. So three, so the symbol that we use to denote gamma radiations is this. 
So I can now list them here. We have gamma radiations, we have alpha particles, then we also have beta particles. Those are the three radiations that happen to be radiated when there's nuclear disintegration. Of course, there are others. There's one more which I haven't made mention of, but I will end here because that's what we have here. So now, what is the question? The question is, identify the emission P, Q, P and Q, rather. So this P and Q. So you need to know the behavior of these radiations when they're exposed to a magnetic and electric field. This is where they behave, so you have to know this. So now, by knowing how they behave when they happen to be exposed to an electric field, you'll be able to identify them. Okay, so when they happen to be exposed to a magnetic field, when they are made to pass through a, man, uh, a magnetic field, an electric field, this is where they behave. So now this is what is being demonstrated here. This is an electric field. So you need to know that beta particles com consist of electrons. And electrons are actually negatively charged. So they have a negative charge of negative one because it's one electron that is released when there is a nuclear disintegration. Alpha particles consist of two protons and uh, two neutrons. Two protons and two neutrons. Then these are this is simply energy, gamma radiations uh, simply composed of energy. They have no charge of whatsoever. So now let's look at these characteristics of these radiations. If beta particles are negatively charged, then we expect them to be deflected towards the positive terminal or the positive, the positive uh, charges. So when you check here, they have indicated positive, that side negative. So beta particles are the ones that have to be deflected towards the positive, uh, the positive charges. So these are beta particles. So we can check what's P. P are beta particles. And then what's Q? Q has no charge. It's not deflected towards the positive or the negative. It simply proceeds to it. So those are gamma radiations. These are gamma radiations. Gamma radiations. Then give one use of emission. Emission Q. What's the use of emission Q? So if you're able to identify that, you'll be able to give uh, the uses. So now, what's the use of gamma radiations? So gamma radiations are used in irradiating food particles. They're able to kill bacteria. So if you suspect that the foods have been exposed to bacteria, you can irradiate them with gamma radiations and all the bacteria will be killed. Then the same gamma radiations are actually used in treatment of cancer cells. You simply happen to irradiate the area which is uh, identified to have cancer cells and all those cancer cells will actually be killed. Those are some of the uses of gamma radiations. There are many more, but uh, since they only asked for one, I've given two. Let's move on to the third question. So the same, mention two differences between emissions P and R. So they're trying to tell you that contrast, gamma, uh, contrast the beta and the alpha particles. So I've actually brought them up and they only want two differences. So, the beta particles are actually negatively charged, while alpha particles are positively charged. We can as well compare them, or we can contrast them in terms of mass. Alpha particles are co consist of two protons 
and two neutrons, meaning that they have a large mass as compared to beta particles, which consist of one electron. Okay? We can also compare them or contrast them in terms of speed, how they move. Okay? I think we've answered the questions. If you need more answers, I, I did some some videos on, on, on atomic physics. So you need to look for the playlist and watch them through and you, you'll be able to have a full grasp of the topic. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time watching, please don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so that anytime I happen to post a video, you happen to be the first one to be alerted. Don't forget to share the video with your friends. Invite them over, let them subscribe so that Together, we make it big.